Well, uh, it is a great pleasure uh, to welcome four leaders from Africa, uh, all of whom uh, are doing uh, extraordinary work. Uh, President Sal from Senegal, uh, President Banda from Malawi, uh, President uh, Koroma uh, from Sierra Leone, uh, and Prime Minister Neves from Cape Verde. Uh, the reason that uh, I'm meeting with these four is they uh, exemplify the progress that we're seeing in Africa. Uh, all of them have had to deal with some extraordinary challenges. Uh, you know, Sierra Leone, just 10 years ago, was in the midst of as brutal a civil war uh, as we've ever seen. Uh, and yet now uh, we've seen consecutive uh, fair and free elections, and, and under President Paroma's uh, leadership, uh, we've seen not only good governance, but also uh, significant economic growth. Uh, when uh, you talk about uh, Malawi, uh, there was a constitutional crisis uh, just uh, last year, and uh, yet President Banda has not only been able to uh, be in office and make sure that uh, constitutional order was restored, but has also made significant progress uh, on behalf of her people. Uh, and her personal story of overcoming a history of abuse uh, and leading women throughout our country, uh, I think, indicates uh, the kinds of progress that can be made when you've got strong leadership. Uh, the same is true uh, for uh, His Excellency President Saul. Uh, there were some bumps in the road in, in terms of transition uh, from the previous president, and yet uh, the Senegalese rose up uh, at a grassroots level and sustained uh, their democracy. And uh, Cape Verde uh, is a real success story. Uh, we were hearing from Minister Nevis about the fact that uh, just in a few decades uh, they've moved from a per capita income of maybe uh, $200 a year to now uh, $4,000 a year uh, and are now moving into the middle of the pack uh, in terms of uh, development levels uh, because of good governance and management. So uh, what our discussion has focused on is, number one, how do we continue to build on strong democracies? How do we uh, continue to build on transparency and accountability? Because what we've learned over the last several decades is that when you've got good governance, when you have democracies that work, sound management of public funds, transparency and accountability to the citizens that put leaders in place, it turns out that that is not only good for the state uh, and the functioning of government, it's also good for economic development because it gives people confidence, it attracts business, it facilitates trade and commerce. And all of these uh, leaders uh, have good stories to tell on that. Uh, they recognize that there's still more work to be done, uh, and so I'm very pleased that uh, all of them uh, are looking to move forward uh, on the open government partnership that we uh, helped to organize uh, through the United Nations several years ago, and that we are now seeing uh, countries from all across the world sign up for setting up international norms for accountability and transparency uh, that can lead to good governance. Uh, we also talked about the economic situation, and uh, all of us recognize that uh, although Africa has actually been growing faster than uh, almost every other region of the world, it started from a low baseline and it still has a lot of work to do. That means building human capacity and improving education uh, and job skills for uh, rapidly growing and young populations. It means improving access to energy uh, and transportation sectors. Uh, and so we discussed how the United States can continue to partner effectively with each of these countries. Uh, and then we finally talked about young people generally and how we can uh, mobilize the next generation of African leadership. Uh, and uh, individuals like uh, uh, President Koroma uh, have, have taken uh, great interest in finding additional ways that we can recruit and engage uh, young people, uh, not only to get involved in public service, but also uh, to get involved in entrepreneurship that helps build these countries. And so uh, my main message uh, to each of these leaders is that the United States is going to be a strong partner, uh, not uh, based on the old model in which we are a donor and they are simply a recipient, but a new model that's based on partnership and recognizing that uh, no continent has greater potential, greater upside uh, than the continent of Africa if uh, they, in fact, uh, have the kind of strong leadership that, uh, 
these four individuals represent. Uh, and we intend to continue to engage with them through a range of programs, uh, through the Millennium Challenge, through uh, the USAID, uh, through the PEPFAR programs, uh, but we're also looking for new models uh, that can uh, potentially improve our bilateral relations uh, even more. Uh, last point I'd make, we all discussed some of the regional challenges involved. Uh, obviously, uh, economic development prosperity doesn't happen if you have constant conflict. Uh, and nobody knows that more than uh, these individuals. Uh, some, like uh, President Coroma, has seen that firsthand. Uh, now, many of the threats are transnational. Uh, you've seen terrorism infiltrate uh, into the region. Uh, we've seen uh, drug cartels that are using uh, West Africa in particular as a transit point. Uh, all of this uh, undermines uh, some of the progress that's been made, and so the United States will continue to cooperate uh, with each of these countries uh, to try to find uh, smart solutions so that they can build additional capacity and make sure uh, that these cancers don't grow uh, in their region. Uh, and the United States intends to be a strong partner for that. So uh, I just want to say to each of them, thank you for uh, your extraordinary work. Uh, you should know that you have a great friend in the United States, uh, in the people of the United States, uh, and in the President of the United States, uh, because uh, we believe that if, if you're successful, uh, that ultimately will help us grow our economies and contribute to a more peaceful world as well. So thank you very much. Mr. Raymond. Thank you, guys. Yes, yeah, Mandela. Well, Are you obviously, uh, obviously, we're all uh, deeply concerned with uh, uh, Nelson Mandela's health. Uh, he's a hero, I think, to all of us. Uh, I'm sure that I speak for uh, the other leaders here. And uh, you know, we will be uh, keeping him in our thoughts and prayers and his entire family. Uh, he is uh, as uh, strong physically uh, as he's been in character uh, and in leadership uh, over so many decades. Uh, and, and hopefully uh, he, will, uh, he will come out of this uh, latest challenge. But uh, we all recognize that uh, he has given uh, everything to his people, the people of South Africa, uh, to the people of the continent, and he's ended up being an inspiration uh, to all of us. Uh, when you think of a single individual that, that embodies the kind of leadership qualities that I think we all aspire to. Uh, the first name that comes up is Nelson Mandela, and, uh, and so we wish him uh, all the very best. All right? Thank, Thank you, guys.